Right, so let's have more example. Our examples on uh, working stress. So this time with uh, shearing stress. So for example, we have these two wood panels. So let's say this is the first part of the wood panel, second part of the wood panel. They are connected using a, a glue. And the glue portion is, or let's say, the glue portion is 30 degrees inclined with respect to the horizontal. So the dimension of this wood panel is 4 inches wide and 1 inch thick. We are to design for the same value of a P using this uh, working stresses. So for the property of the wood, the allowable stress or working stress is going to 1,120 pounds per square inch. While the glue used in this portion, uh, we have a normal stress of 700 psi and a shearing stress of uh, 450 psi. So to design for the same value of P, let us first consider, let's say, the wood portion. Okay, what is the cross-sectional area of the wood? Okay, if we are to cut the wood on this uh, portion, it will give us this uh, section. So the area under consideration is the same as 4 times 1, or our area is the same as 4 square uh, inch. That is the cross-sectional area of the wood portion. So we have working stress is basically going to the force divided by the area. So what will be the equivalent value of P is equal to 1,120 pounds per square inch equal to the value of P, our area is 4 square inches. So we have the value of P is equal to, that is equal to 1,120 times 4, okay, this is equal to 4,480 pounds. That will be the same value of P according to the working stress, normal working stress for the wood. So what about the glued portion? So if you are to cut this portion, at 30, this uh, inclined area, inclined at 30 degrees, Alright, so the inclined area, the inclination is uh, equal to 30 degrees. This will be the area under consideration. So we'll be having a new value of the length of this rectangular area. So the same, the thickness is the same as 1 inch. So how to determine the value of that uh, L? You can use the function, this is 4 inch, this is cosine of 30 degrees, adjacent side is 4 inch or 4 inches divided by the length. So we have the length is the same as 4, that is 4 divided by cosine of 30 degrees. So that L is equal to 4.6188 okay, inches. So we have been a rectangular cross section, 1 inch thick with a length of 4.6188 in inches. So this will be the dimension of the area under a uh, consideration. Okay, now, since this area is inclined, okay, the direction of the force P is vertical. And this, this will be the direction of the force P. Since it is a vertical and our area is inclined, it will have two components. Okay, the first component is the perpendicular component. Let's say this is P perpendicular. The other component is P parallel. Let's say this is P parallel. This angle will be the same as this angle, 30 degrees. You can prove that using geometry. So how do we compute for the perpendicular force and the parallel force? So 
Okay, by trigonometry, the equivalent of the perpendicular component is basically equal to the force P cosine of 30 degrees. This one, or that will be P perpendicular is P cosine of 30 degrees. What about the P parallel? The P parallel or the parallel force to this area is a P sine of 30 degrees. So I hope okay, this is clear since this is just a right triangle. Okay, how do we compute for normal stress? The normal stress is the force perpendicular. Uh, take note, we are now dealing on the glue portion or on the glue, the property of the glue. It's just it's inclined with respect to horizontal at 30 degrees. So normal stress is the feet perpendicular divided by our area. What is the area under consideration? It is an inclined area. So this inclined area is equal to 1 inch a thick. This is 1 inch thick modified by its length. That is equal to 4.6188 inches. So our new area is equal to 4.6188 square inches. Okay, so what is the allowable normal stress on the glued portion? That is 700 pounds divided by square, uh, square inch is equal to P perpendicular is P cosine of 30 degrees divided by our area. So the area under consideration is 4.1. Uh, 4.6 this is 4.6188 square inch so we have in the value of P based on the allowable normal stress of the glue so this is 700 pounds multiplied by 4.6188 and this is equal to uh, multiplied by 4. 700 times 4.6188 divided by cosine of 30 degrees okay, that will be equal to 3733.332 okay, pounds so this will be the same value based on the normal stress or okay, the same normal stress on the glue okay, then what about the shearing stress so for the shearing stress we have tau is equal to the shearing stress divided by the area or this is the same as the force parallel to the area okay? so what is the allowable shearing stress for the glue? we have that as 450 pounds what is 450 pounds per square inch is equal to what is the equivalent of the P parallel P parallel is equal to P sine of 30 degrees divided by what is our area this time the area under consideration is 4.6188 square inch so uh, square inches so what will be the state value of p based on the allowable shearing stress so you have that as uh, 450 multiplied by 4.6188 divided by the sine of 30 degrees Okay, that value is equal to uh, 4,156.92 pounds. Now, if we are to decide, okay, based on the property of the wood, uh, based on the property of the wood, what is the state value of P? This is equal to 4,480 pounds. Okay, based on the property of the glue, normal stress, we have that as 3733.332 pounds and based on the pro based on the property of the glue considering its allowable shearing stress this is equal to 4156.4156.92 uh, pounds uh, take note that if we are designing for a safe value of a load uh, right, the smallest value is the safest value. So which one is the smallest? The smallest value is we have 3733.332. That is based on the allowable normal stress of the group. So this will be our solution.
And so let's have this example. Okay, for example, we have this uh, lock joint. Okay, we are using two plates. The thickness of each uh, plate is okay, 7 over 8 of an inch. So these two plates will be fastened using okay, 4 3 4 inch diameter uh, rivets. We are uh, required to design for the safe value of P using this uh, working stresses or allowable stresses. For the rivets, the allowable ceiling stress is to 14 KSI or that is the kips per uh, square inch. While for the plate, this is a bearing stress, allowable bearing stress, equal to 18 kips per square inch. Alright? So we are to assume that this load P will be equally distributed to the four uh, rivets. So if this is the load P, uh, it will be, for example, reacted by this uh, rivet with a shear B, or this one another shear B, or this one another shear B, and for the fourth one another by shear uh, B. So this is by summation of forces horizontal equal to zero. Let's say the force P will be equal to the four shear to be carried by each rivet. So the equivalent of the shear force will be the load P divided by a uh, four. Let us design the same value of the force P first using the property of the rivet. So for the rivet or rivets, okay, the given property is the allowable shear stress. That is the shear force divided by the area. So why is it a shear force for a rivet? For example, this is the rivet. The direction of the shear force is okay, horizontal while our rivet is uh, vertical. So this is our area. So again, shear stress is equal to shear over the area if the applied shear force is parallel to the area. Okay, so we have the allowable shear stress is 14 kips uh, per square inch is equal to what is the equivalent of the shear force in terms of the force P, that is P over uh, 4. What is the cross-sectional area of the ribbon? Okay, if we have a diameter of 3 fourths, the, dia okay, the area is pi, the diameter is 3 over 4 squared divided by uh, 4 square inches. So I solve for the area using the diameter. So what will be the same value of P using the allowable shearing stress of the rivet? So it's the same as uh, 14 kips per square inch multiplied by uh, 3 fourths squared uh, multiplied by pi over 4 uh, then multiplied by 4. I will have 14 times sorry. I will equal to 24. This is 24 point I uh, 74. I uh, cancel the square inches unit. The remaining unit will be a uh, kicks. So this is multiplied by 1,000 pounds is to one kips. Or one kip. One thousand pounds is one kip. You move this. One thousand pounds is a uh, one kip. So we have the value of P is the same as twenty-four thousand seven hundred forty pounds. Uh, that is the state value of P based on the shearing stress, allowable shearing stress of each event. So let us now consider uh, what is the same value of P using the allowable bearing stress that is for uh, the plate. Okay, so what, what is our area if we are to deal with the bearing stress? Okay, for the bearing stress, we are just consider this uh, portion, considering this one ribbon this projected area by the contact surface of one rivet and the thickness of the plate. So this uh, this area, if you are to project this area, by okay, this thickness, uh, this is the thickness of the plate, which is given as I uh, seven over eight of an inch, and the corresponding width, the corresponding width will be the, the same as the diameter of the rivet. 
that is the same as 3 verb, 4 inch. So this will be the area under consideration. Okay, the projected area of the contact surface of the ribbon and the plate. So we have normal stress for bearing is equal to okay, the shear force divided by the area. So we have the bearing stress, allowable bearing stress is 18 kips per square inch is now equal to we have a equivalent of this uh, shear force that is the same as P over 4 okay, divided by our area this time is the diameter of the ribbon we have that as 3 over 4 then multiplied by the thickness of the plate this is 7 over 8 of an inch so this will be square inches then let us determine the state value of P that is 18 okay, multiplied by 3 over 4 Multiplied by 7 over uh, 8, then multiplied by 4. Uh, we have that as we have the value of P is equal to 47,000, uh, 47.25 kips. I multiply by 1,000 pounds, the F is to 1, 1 kip. I think that the meaning of kip is kilopounds. So we have the value of the force P based on the bearing stress is 47.25 by 1000 is we have this value 47,250 pounds. So again if you are designing structures, if you are designing the same load to be carried by structures, the lighter the load or the weaker the load, the safer. So the, the smaller value will be our answer and this is Alright, 24,740. Alright, this will be our solution.